Hello, friends, and welcome back to Malicious Compliance Stories. Let's start our video with a story about a dedicated worker facing overwhelming challenges at a high-end grocery store. Department manager wants me to stay late to finish all duties. Sure. This happened in December 2019. I got a job at a higher-end grocery store in the area as I was planning on saving for when I started college in the fall of 2020. The store has all kinds of different departments like a market cafe, pizza, sub shop, cheese, etc. I aced my interview and was hired in the bakery department specifically for breads only. That'll be important later. The first four months was a breeze, but after COVID-19 ramped up, my doctor put me on leave until August. When I returned, a lot of people had quit in the bakery. I was taking college classes now, so I was working night shift part-time from 5 to 9 p.m. My department manager, Hannah, informed me that they were short-staffed on nights and I might be on my own one day a week. I was sure I'd be getting help for the rest of the nights. Nope. Weeks go by and I barely get help. I'm burning myself out doing closing shift on my own along with my schoolwork. No one was in the dessert or breakfast section and I can't talk to anyone about it because they're gone by the time I clock in. I complained to the bread manager, Jim, and he told me to talk to Hannah since she runs the whole department. Sure, fine. This is how the conversation went with Hannah. OP. Hey, I wanted to talk to you about the workload. A lot of day shift people leave their mess and can't clean up after themselves. I have to do that in my duties, which isn't fair. Are you hiring anyone for nights? I can't keep running around and using my inhaler so much, too. Hannah. Oh, yeah, we're having a hard time filling the night shift roles. We can always train you for desserts and breakfast. OP. That's not what I meant. I meant assistance, not more responsibility. I can't do everything in the bakery and close with only four hours. Hannah. Well, you can figure something out. Just make sure you don't leave a mess during closing, though. You can't leave until everything's done. I can't leave until everything's done. Okay. Ever since she said that, I started documenting every time I had to do three jobs at once. I would take my sweet time when I didn't have class the next day, making sure I clocked out at 11 p.m. each time. The amount of stuff that kept piling was ridiculous, but I was simply following her instructions. HR noticed my clock in and out times and wanted me to come by their office. I told them everything, including what Hannah said to me, along with the photos I took. Suddenly, everything changed. At 9 o'clock sharp, they were kicking me out, and whatever was left was for the morning. Ha! Ha! Hannah was reprimanded but wasn't fired until she was caught selling two-year-old expired pumpkin pies to customers during Thanksgiving. That day sure was a doozy. I was shocked when I saw all those empty boxes she already sold. Edit. I was working morning shift and saw many of the habits they had when I was first hired, but it didn't affect me until I was working night shift alone. I had no idea how bad it was until I experienced it. During mornings, I always made sure to clean up after myself, even the bread slicer, which can have caked on mess by the afternoon. For those curious about the pumpkin pie incident, we were all working overtime and preparing for Thanksgiving. I heard from this older lady that works day shift that she was cleaning out the freezer and found two-year-old pies from a vendor we package and sell. She was asking Hannah what to do with them because there were a lot of them. I forgot how many were in a box. Hannah said, just put a label on them and place them on display. We can get more profit that way. Excuse me, what? The older woman said she was shocked and used her PTO to leave early. She was scared of jeopardizing her job. She told me it was weighing on her conscience and told the store manager. I truly forgot the woman's name, but she was extremely nice to me. There were about seven large boxes full of mini and large pumpkin pies. Hannah was promptly fired. Sweet karma. I'm often baffled by how many adults just expect someone else to clean their crap at work. Like, mate, your mom or wife isn't here to pick behind you. And our second story. Car buyer tries to get free internet from me. So this happened to me recently. I had a car and it started to give more trouble than it should, so I decided to let it go at the first person buying it. I got a car buyer and seller, the type that goes to the place, gives money hand-to-hand, -hand, and takes it away without much bureaucracy. I signed the paper with the selling declaration, he gave me the money, and off he goes. Now, my bad I didn't take a photo of the paper, but I assumed he would send it to me so I have a copy. He didn't. Even after I asked politely, he never sent me a copy of the selling declaration. 
Some time goes by and I went to check at my personal area in the finance department if the vehicle was still there. It was. I keep sending him messages to please come change the name to yourself and send me a copy of the declaration. Nothing. I warned him I would take the issue with authorities and he replies it was almost done. After a while, he actually changed the car register to himself. Okay, done, so I thought. A few months go by and I receive an email from my ISP stating my new contract is on the way to the XXX address as I requested. I got WTF? I didn't request anything. I called them and later I went to a physical store explaining the situation. They reported it as fraud and proceeded to cancel the service that they meanwhile had already installed. Thing is, the contract I received had one of his numbers, so I recognized it was that car buyer doing it. While my ISP actually went there to install the service, two days after, they went back there and removed it. The guy was furious and calling by phone stating it was a mistake and he was trying to clear things up with the ISP. I wish I could have seen his face when the ISP guys went back there to disable the service. And our next story. I may know where everything is, but I'm not your employee. A few years ago, I was in a large home improvement store. I had a regular shopping buggy as well as a lumber cart, both filled with materials for whatever remodeling job I was doing at the time. I did have an orange t-shirt that matched the aprons worn by employees, but most definitely do not work there. As I was going down one of the aisles with both of my carts, an elderly gentleman stopped me asking if I worked there. I told him I didn't work there, but would be happy to help him find whatever it was he needed. We walked a couple of aisles over, leaving my carts in the aisle where we met. As I was explaining the difference between two similar products, a female customer came up and was obviously waiting to talk to me. She needed help deciding what kind of doorknob she needed for a storm door, which I gladly helped her pick out. I was finally able to get back to my carts to finish gathering supplies when an actual employee approached me. He said something along the lines of, now that you're done helping customers, do you think you can get all this junk put back on the shelves? I just laughed and said, no, I'm good. The employee got red in the face and said to put all this crap back or I'll call the manager. At this point, I realized I was once again being mistaken for an employee, so said, go ahead and call him. The employee punched some numbers into his phone and started telling whoever picked up that the new guy has two carts full of random stuff in aisle X and is refusing to put it back on the shelves. The manager quickly came to the aisle we were in. I figured at this point, Everyone could have a good laugh at the misunderstanding. I was wrong. The manager immediately started telling me, you will take these items and put them back where they belong or you will be terminated. I tried at this time explaining that I don't work there but was further verbally abused by the manager saying, I saw you on the monitors wandering around the store talking to customers when you should have been putting all this back where it belongs. At this point, I decided I was done with that particular store and just walked out leaving about $4,000 worth of merchandise sitting in the two carts for someone to put away while loudly telling the manager, I don't work here. You know it's Home Depot, even without mentioning Orange, because the manager was mad at you for helping customers. And our next story. Neighbor damaged my property while mowing her lawn. I live in Indiana, Allen County. My neighbor moved in about two and a half to three years ago. She is a raging alcoholic retiree. Almost two years ago, within the statute of limitations, my neighbor was mowing the lawn and hit my car with a rock. The rock ricocheted and hit my house, which alarmed us inside. Didn't realize what had happened until the next day when I find grass, mulch, and a massive dent on my car from my neighbor hitting a rock with her lawnmower. I told her what happened, she accepted responsibility, and I told her I have to send it through insurance. I file an insurance claim. She doesn't respond to them reaching out, so I had the option of taking her to court over it. A year and a half goes by, and I finally get it fixed, and I didn't want to go to court with a neighbor over $400. I should have. Fast forward to this weekend. Laying in bed with my sick wife, we hear a loud bang coming from the front room of the house. Assumed a bird hit the window and flew away. So I looked out the window, looking for a bird, and lo and behold, the same neighbor is mowing her lawn. She stops, looks at the house for a while while smoking a cigarette. I thought she was just being weird and noticed me looking at her, so I thought nothing of it. Next day, Monday, I'm coming home from work and notice a six-inch hole in my siding. I immediately knew what happened. I go inspect, and like I suspected, there's a piece of chipped rock. 
I take the broken pieces of siding and try to put them back to recreate what happened, and this chipped rock absolutely came from her flower beds, and she was staring at the hole she made in my house. I go over to talk to her. She admits fault and affirms my suspicions and says she'll get somebody to fix it. I told her she has till Friday or I'll find somebody to fix it. Fast forward again to today. I'm walking behind my car at work and notice a pretty major ding in my trunk. I have no reason to suspect that this was caused by anyone other than the same neighbor hitting another rock while mowing. So to clarify, she has admittedly hit my car and house with a rock and probably hit my car with another rock. I'm sick of this. I want to take her to court. I'm going to get quotes from a house repair service and a car repair service. I just don't know what to do after that. She's a threat to my safety of life and property. What if she hit me or my wife with the rock? I can't keep fixing things out of pocket because she can't mow the lawn sober and keeps running over rocks. And our last story. Grandpa's house. My grandfather's been retired for about 10 years now. Unfortunately, my grandmother passed away five years ago, so my grandfather lives alone in his house. For a while, he tried renting out a spare room, but he decided that peace and quiet were more valuable. I love visiting him, even though he's grumpy, because he always has an interesting story or topic for conversation. One day, my grandfather had to undergo surgery. He had gallstones that could no longer be broken up, and the doctor said his gallbladder needed to be removed. While he was in the hospital, he asked me to check in on the house from time to time. The first time I visited, everything was fine. The second time, four days later, I arrived to find a construction crew pouring concrete on my grandfather's property. They'd already dug a hole, set up the framework, and even half-filled it with concrete. When I went to confront the workers, our neighbor Karen burst out and started yelling at me to leave. Karen. Your grandfather is already dead. I saw the ambulance take him away, and he hasn't been around for a few days. Me. Karen, he had surgery. Karen. Old men don't survive surgeries at that age. He'll die soon, so he won't need this land anymore, and I don't have a proper driveway. While I was arguing with Karen and trying to chase off the workers, the police arrived. Karen had called them as soon as she saw me pull up. Karen. Officer, arrest him. He jumped out of the bushes and attacked my workers. Me. Hey, this is my grandfather's land. One of the workers. Officer, this is all nonsense. Karen's lying. He just came to talk. Karen. Officer, he bribed my workers so they wouldn't finish my driveway. This guy has always been a jerk. Officer. Karen, so he's actually your neighbor? Me. Yes, here are the keys to my grandfather's house. Officer. I'll write you a ticket for a false report, and you all calm down and go home. All the while, Karen was making some animalistic noises in the background. Me. This is my grandfather's land, and they're building here without permission. Karen. No, it's my land. Officer. Do you have documents for the land? Me. No, they're somewhere in my grandfather's house. Officer. Then it's just a civil matter. Take it to court. I have other work to do. He wrote Karen a ticket and left. I went to call my father to ask what to do. He advised me to tell the workers that if they didn't stop, I would find the documents in the house and call the police on them for trespassing. The workers turned out to be decent guys and stopped working. My father and I filed a lawsuit against Karen for damages, and of course, we won compensation and payment for the restoration of the land. My grandfather recovered in two weeks and became even grumpier because doctors banned him from drinking whiskey and beer. Now he drinks wine. <laughs> Strong old man. I hope this old man can drink wine for many years to come. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.